Hey guys, my name is Gabby. Welcome back to my channel and today I'm going to be doing a popular book tag that I've been seeing going around booktube lately and that is the anti-TBR tag. And this tag is basically a fun and also controversial tag where I get to talk about all the books that I never plan on reading. And you know, I think something that's so great about reading books is that we all have different tastes when it comes to books. We all enjoy different things in books. And that means that there are a handful of books out there that I never plan to read, whether it's because I'm not interested in them or just because I think maybe one day I'll pick them up and then I just keep pushing it off forever and never actually pick them up. And I think this is a kind of a fun tag to get to talk about those kinds of things that I might not get to talk about otherwise. <laughs> Before we do jump into today's video, I just wanted to say a huge thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring today's video. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for creative and curious people. Explore new skills, deepen existing passions, and get lost in creativity. You can spend 2021 creating something meaningful with Skillshare's online classes because time is what we make of it. It's curated specifically for learning, meaning that there are no ads and they're always launching new premium classes so that you can stay focused and follow wherever your creativity takes you. With Skillshare, you can find inspiration in the moment and learn how to express your creativity. And it's less than $10 a month with an annual subscription. I recently just started taking this class called Productivity Masterclass, Create a Custom System That Works by Thomas Frank. And I think this class is really awesome because I'm always trying to find ways to be more productive with my time because it can be very overwhelming to have a full-time job and doing YouTube on top of that. And I just like to figure out the best ways that I can manage my time personally. And I like that this this class shares tips on how to stay productive in all different aspects of your life. But if this class doesn't interest you, they do offer so many other classes and creative topics like creative writing, photography, directing, cinematography, illustration, graphic design, like literally anything that you could think of creatively, it's probably there. So for a limited time, please make sure to use the link in my description to get a free trial of Skillshare's premium membership so that you can explore your creativity. Thanks again so much to Skillshare for sponsoring today's video and supporting my channel and the booktube community. All right, so question number one of this tag is a popular book that everyone loves that you have no interest in reading. And honestly, I have so many books that could be a potential answer for this because I usually don't feel pressure to read books just because they're popular, especially because I feel like fantasy books are so popular and fantasy is like my least favorite genre. So I never really feel pressured to read books just because they're popular, but I mean a huge example of this would be Harry Potter. I never read Harry Potter as a kid, I never felt pressured to, and I just knew that it wouldn't be my thing because not a fan of wizards, not a fan of fantasy, I just never got into it. And then same with like Lord of the Rings, The Hobbit, like Percy Jackson, like these are all super popular books and series that I know people love, but I just personally never got into them and probably never will because I'm just not into fantasy and I know that about myself and I just know there's a 99% chance that I won't enjoy it. <laughs> the second question says a classic book or author that you don't have an interest in reading. And this is another one where I feel like I could have a million answers for this because Again, I don't often read classic books. I did have to read some classic books when I was in school, you know, as like required reading, but choosing to read a classic book on my own has never really been a priority of mine. And I feel like it's because I so rarely will enjoy a classic. Like I feel like Little Women is the only classic book I've read that I actually really enjoyed, but I just jotted down a few different classic books that I would have never planned to read. And that's like Moby Dick, Wuthering Heights of Mice and Men, Les Miserables, and Don Quixote like I just don't have any plans to ever read those even though that I know they're classics but like don't get me wrong I do have a stack of classic books that I would like to read at some point I don't know if all of these are considered classics but I have The Great Gatsby which I've never read but I do want to read this one soon and then I have Rebecca I have 1984 by George Orwell, and I don't have Animal Farm, but I would like to read Animal, Animal Farm as well. And then I do have Jane Eyre, which I've never read that I'm hoping to read this year. And then I don't know if And Then There Were None is a classic, but I have this one and I do plan to read this one. And then again, I don't know if these are classics either, but I have Fight Club and American Psycho. And these are two books that I've been wanting to read for years, and I think they are classics. They're more maybe like modern classics, I don't know, but um, I do plan to read these, but I just feel like I just never make time for classics because they're so intimidating. Oh yeah, I also would really like to read um, The Picture of Dorian Gray, which is a classic that I do think I would probably 
enjoy. It just sounds like something I might enjoy. So that's another one I have my eye on. <laughs> Third question says, a problematic author whose books you have no interest in reading. I mean, I think the go-to answer for this is probably J.K. Rowling because, you know, not only do I already not have an interest in Harry Potter, but after all of this shit has surfaced from her in the last few years, or at least, I mean, I personally never even heard of all of her transphobia until recently in these last few years. Like, I don't know if this has been obvious to everyone else for a very long time, but I hadn't heard of her very transphobic and very problematic opinions until um, pretty recently in these last few years. And so now it's like, not only will I never read Harry Potter because I don't have an interest in it, but now I will never read Harry Potter because JK Rowling is a piece of shit. All right, the fourth question says, an author you have read a couple of books from and have decided their books are not for you. Holy shit, there have been so many authors where I'll be like, oh, I'll just give them like one more chance or another chance. And then I keep feeling like maybe it's me, but I'm like, okay, maybe I just don't connect with this author. Like I, I just can't anymore. One example of this would be John Green, mainly because he just writes these really like flowery young adult. It's also due to the fact that I just don't enjoy young adult books as much as I did before, but specifically John Green books, like I just can't personally, I just never really enjoy them that much. And so I just don't think I'm gonna be reading any more John Green in the future. And then as far as thrillers go, I think Wendy Walker is an author that I just don't vibe with for some reason with her thrillers. There's only been one that I kind of enjoyed and that was Emma in the Night. I think I gave that one like three stars or so, but even still like I've never had a book by Wendy Walker that I like absolutely love. All of her books, I'm, I find them to be pretty basic or pretty like disappointing, at least for me, I don't know why. Then same with the author Zoge Stage. She wrote Baby Teeth and Wonderland. And after those two books, I'm just like, her writing is just not for me. <laughs> like I've tried so hard to love both of these books and I ended up really disliking both of them. So like, I just can't. And then we have Anna Todd who I'm pretty sure I've only read one of her books and I was like, no. And then we also have Jennifer Neven who wrote All the Bright Places and Holding Up the Universe. And she almost completely ruined young adult books for me. Like never again. They were both one star books for me. And then lastly, Sally Rooney. I've only read Normal People from her, but I can just feel like from that experience, I'm just not going to connect with her writing. And she also does the thing where she doesn't put any quotation marks around dialogue and it makes me feel like I'm going insane while I'm reading. The next question, number five, it says a genre you have no interest in or a genre you tried to get into and couldn't. I mean, obviously I said fantasy books <laughs> would be probably my biggest thing of like a genre that I can't get into, but it's weird because fantasy is such a huge, like umbrella term, right? Because fantasy can mean a lot of different things. And it's confusing because when I say I don't like fantasy, I'm talking about like specific kinds of fantasy, but I do enjoy some fantasy that involves more like a sci-fi fantasy world. Like I can handle, I think the thing that I don't like about fantasy is I don't like reading books where the world is completely different from ours and it has like places that don't actually exist and it's like high fantasy you know like it has creatures in it like dragons or people are like wizards or their spells like that kind of stuff i just don't really vibe with in fantasy books but i think the kind of fantasy that i do like is a fantasy book that's kind of more like a futuristic sci-fi fantasy kind of book where maybe they're still like powers like superheroes like are superheroes fantasy like i don't really know but I kind of like reading about that kind of stuff. I like reading books like Scythe where it's like, it's kind of like our world, but it's very far in the future. So that's what makes it kind of like fantasy and people are immortal and they kind of have like some fantasy abilities. Like I like that kind of fantasy, but I don't really like fantasy that feels very like medieval kind of like, like Game of Thrones where there's like kings and queens and like royalty and like stuff like that. I just don't really vibe with. I don't know. So I guess that's mainly my answer. And also for a genre I've tried to get into and I just can't is like self-help books or like certain kinds of memoirs that are catered to like improving yourself. I don't know why anytime I read like a self-help book, I can't help but like wanting to roll my eyes the entire time that I'm reading it. Just can't listen to someone else like preach to me like the best way to live your life. Like this is the best way that you can live your life if you just take my advice it just makes me cringe so much and i just i can't do it like even if it's good advice i still just like can't get sucked into it i don't know why and then also like some historical fiction like i've mentioned this before that i have a very love and hate relationship with historical fiction and i think the main reason for that is i like reading some historical fiction i think that's more 
character focused, but I don't like reading historical fiction that takes place during a war or like if the book mainly revolves around war then I'm probably not going to enjoy it. And that's why I think it's so shocking that I love The Nightingale so much because that is a book that is set up to be something that I probably wouldn't really enjoy. But my god, I loved that book so much. But I do think it was because The Nightingale is more focused on the sisters relationship than the actual war itself. But still any books that revolve around war, I'm just like not into it. Same with like any movies that revolve around war, not about it. I just, uh, I can't. Right, the next question, number six, says a book you have bought but will never read. This can be a book you have unhauled or returned to the library unread. <laughs> For a book that I've bought but I will probably never actually read, um, there's this one book, Heartbreaker, and I've had it for a few years now and honestly like I don't know if I'll ever read it because to be honest the premise of this doesn't exactly sound like something I would love but I've kept it all these years because the cover is absolutely stunning and it's one of my favorite book covers of all time and I'm just absolutely obsessed with looking at it. Like I just love this like kind of like 80s vibe and this like blue and green ombre happening on the cover and this like little silhouette of this car. It's very like Nightcrawler vibes or something. And like will I ever read this book? Honestly, probably not. I don't think it's gonna happen, but I will probably keep this book because I just like to look at it. Does that make me shallow? Probably, but I don't care. And then I also have All the Light We Cannot See. I bought this book a few years ago when this book was just like all of the hype. And again, you know, like I said, historical fiction and especially revolving around war just isn't really my thing. I don't even remember if this one actually revolves around war. I think this one does take place during World War II, so I just, I don't think I actually have any interest in reading this, but I just wanted to get it because this book was like so hyped and everybody was saying they loved it so much. And so I've still had this book on my shelves for years because I'm still thinking like maybe one day, but like, will that day ever come? Probably not. And then two other books that I've had for years that I'm just like, will I ever get to these? Like, I don't know, but I hang on to them because I still like somewhere deep in my chest, I'm like, I will read these one day and that's Beasts of Extraordinary Circumstance and Station Eleven. They kind of look similar, don't they? With their like Starry Night covers. Oh my god, maybe that's why I've kept them because I love Starry Night covers. But like Station Eleven, I've been wanting to read this for literally forever. I've actually tried to read this a few times. Like I'm actually 50 pages into this with my little bookmark here, but um, I've tried to read this book like two or three times and every time I try to get into it, I just get bored and I put it down. But then everybody's like, no, you gotta push through the beginning and then it's like so good. And I know this book is about like an apocalypse, I mean, or I guess it's like the aftermath of a plague kind of like wiping everybody out. I'm still interested in reading this, like I still am, but I've just, I've had this book for probably like four or five years. I mean, fuck, I don't even know when this came out, but I want to say I've had this for like four or five years on my shelves and I just, I still have it. Will I ever read it? I don't know, but I plan, I want to still, I guess. And then same with Beasts of Extraordinary Circumstance. I got this from Book of the Month in October 2017. I think I, I just feel like I keep saving this book for my next like reading books outside of my comfort zone video because it's like kind of outside of my comfort zone but then it's like will I ever actually read this like I don't know but a part of me still wants to so I can't let go I can't say goodbye quite yet I mean if you've read either of these books and you can like convince me that I need to pick them up immediately you know like it might happen I don't know the next question number seven says a series you have no interest in reading or a series you started and have DNF'd. <laughs> I am a reader who much prefers standalone books. Like it is very rare for me to read a series and continue in a series and love a series. And so again, I probably have like so many answers that I could say for this because back when I was, you know, first starting out, on booktube in like 2015 I was very often picking up books that I knew that I wouldn't enjoy just because they were popular and because they were well-known fantasy books and like series and I thought like I can get into this and like I can understand the hype but like I didn't and I just didn't really understand my personal reading taste back then so I was just kind of picking up like anything you know but there have been so many series that I've started in DNF for example Six of Crows not my thing Skyward not my thing Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar your children not my thing red queen the selection shadow and bone nearly any popular young adult fantasy series that you can imagine i've probably tried to read it at some point and i was just like nope not my thing the only one that i could see potential with me maybe enjoying and one that i want to read in the future for another like reading books outside of my comfort zone video is the akatar series. I do actually have uh, the book here because I found this at a thrift store. I'm pretty sure like 
two years ago now and I just bought it because I was like maybe someday you know maybe I'll just like read this someday and I still do think I would eventually like to read this just to like just to see just for funsies but I mean yeah I could see this happening in the future so I won't write this series off quite yet but I've never read a Sarah J Mass book so I don't know. And then the last question, number eight, says a new release that you have no interest in reading. And, you know, I mean, as I just said, um, pretty much any new fantasy book that's like all of the hype, I probably personally won't read it. Like some books that I've listed down is like Crescent City. Um, I know that came out recently. That's like really popular. And like Lore and Midnight Sun. That's like the Twilight book. Like I just have no interest in reading that. Another um, new release that I did have interest in reading it, but now I don't, is Every Last Fear by Alex Finlay. I originally was like so freaking hyped to read this book because the premise sounds like everything that I would love in a thriller. But then I heard from so many people online that this book has like really problematic representation of its Mexican characters. So I actually started reading this book myself because I wanted to have my own opinion on it and I only got like 50 pages in before there was like some problematic stuff about the Mexican characters and I was like what the fuck? So I ended up DNFing it after reading the first 50 pages of this and then I read some of my friends reviews on it and a lot of them were saying like even towards the end of this book like this author was just making like all of the Mexican characters seem like criminals like he was writing them in a very problematic way and because most of this book does take place in Mexico but we're following this white family that's going to Mexico and so it's like they keep describing Mexico as like this you know dirty place and like talking about the, the Mexican people there as if they're like sketchy or like they're criminals or something and I'm just like oh my god like can he not? So I as of now this is a new release that I was interested in reading like very much so and now I'm just not it just kind of left a bad taste in my mouth and I just don't really support that so sad <laughs> all right so that was the anti TBR book tag please let me know um, what are your thoughts on this like what are some popular books that you have absolutely no interest in reading but yeah let me know your thoughts let me know of any classics that you will probably never read let me know what classics maybe you think I would actually enjoy and yeah thank you so much for watching and hanging out and uh, <laughs> I will see you very soon with another video 